guys, welcome to Lisa Loves. Um, something a little bit different today. I have moved my usual position. You can see my books there behind me, which will give you a bit of a clue about what I'm going to talk about today. Now, I don't know how long this one's going to be. It may be short, it may be long, who knows. But I felt I had to do a little video about my love for the author, Sean Hudson. Um, hang on. How cool is that? That's a little shirt with Sean. Um, I will put below, if you're a Sean Hudson fan, which you should be, um, there is a Facebook group for the Sean Hudson fan club, um, which quite a few of us are members of, and they have done these little t-shirts and things quite recently, because previously you could never get a Sean Hudson t-shirt, which is like, I've always wanted one. Um, and this one is uber cool. I'm not wearing this one at the moment. You can see on there also, Godfather of Gore is what he has been nicknamed. Um, really cool print and what I love. Anybody that knows about gig t-shirts knows about the tours on the back. Get a load of that. The years and all of the novels. I mean, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, so I love that shirt. It's brilliant. Also, um, you can see beside me here, this is a... Lift it up. This is a signed um, copy of the cover art, 79 of 100 that were made. It's the cover art for the book Chase. Um, you can just about see Sean's signature there. And the artist, where is it? I know it's on this side. I can't see it. There it is. Um, oh, that's not very good, is it? Michael Knight. What a cool name for a start. Um, yeah, um, really, really nice guy. Um, uh, he's on my Facebook page and he is an artist and he works on an awful lot of posters for books, big movies that are like he did the last um, American Horror Story. Um, what was it called? It wasn't Coven. What was it? You know, the one with the bee and the honeycomb and stuff. He, he worked on that. So this usually goes in my bedroom. I thought I'd just bring it as a just to show you. And this is so old. This is probably how a lot of people remember Sean. This is signed, but it's, see how it's all faded away? That's, oh, Sean Hudson. I started to read Sean Hudson books when I was 14 or 15. Um, we used to have a store called, oh, look at my hair, called Bargain Books. And um, they were selling three for a fiver on horror novels. So I picked some up. The first Sean Hudson book that I ever read, and you can see from the spine, <laughs> well read, was this one, Victims. This was my first read of a Sean Hudson book and I was hooked, actually. <laughs> Look at this. You can just about see my name in there, 1992. That's obviously my name before I was married and that's how we would remember Sean back then. Um, this book is absolutely incredible. Um, let me just read you the premise about what it is. Um, Sean Hudson is a horror author if you haven't heard of him. Um, more recently, he's been more going into crime and uh, things that are a bit more believable, but there's always that little twist to it. So this one, violent death had always been a subject close to Frank Miller's heart. As a special effects man for horror films, he made his name creating perfect replicas of charred limbs, rotting corpses and severed heads. But now Miller has a rival, and this time the artist is using real flesh to sculpt his gruesome masterpieces. A vicious psychopath is at work, leaving a trail of butchered corpses in his wake. Only Miller holds the key to the carnage, but can he stop it before he too falls victim to the madness? Absolutely awesome. Um, what I find from having read all of Sean's books um, under various pseudonyms, many years after these books are written, movies are released with extremely similar premises, Sometimes to the point of, that's just totally copied from a Sean Hudson novel. Um, unfortunately, sorry, you, I will turn away a few times. Apologies for that. This is a bit rude, I know. Unfortunately, the only one to ever officially make it to a movie is this one. A lot of horror fans will admit is not the best movie in the world. Um, some people love it, love the humour of it. But having read all of Sean Hudson's novels, picking this as a movie, confused. Some of the books he has written are incredible. So I'll start with the most recent one. You saw the picture here, which is Chase. 
all my um, more recent Sean Hudson novels you probably can't see on this shelf, starting on this side, are all hardback because Lisa can't wait for the paperback so she must get it immediately. This is one of the ones um, that were all autographed. So you can say to Lisa, my ever appreciative victim, all the best, Sean. All of it. This was released by Caffeine Nights Publishing, which is a new publisher for Sean. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I've been really impressed. Um, the, the offer they did for a start with the signed print um, and we got to actually pay to have Sean autograph our book and personalise it for us if that's what we wanted to do. Um, and they're just very proactive with promoting his work um, in a way that previous publishers have maybe not been so much. So yeah, I have nothing but good things to say about them. This one is a bit more, I'm just going to twist this a little bit, is a bit more in the realms of possibility. And this one would make such a good movie. Um, what can I read from this? I'll just read you the premise, shall I? Bet everyone's switching off now. Um, is there such a thing as a second chance in life? And if there is, what price would anyone pay to take that second chance? David and Amy Carson will be given that elusive second chance, but it will require them to plumb the very depths of their souls and their beliefs. As they and their eight-year-old daughter are preparing for a dream holiday in America, they have no idea of the maelstrom of evil and madness they are entering. They've heard nothing of the series of child abductions and murders that have plagued the area they intend to visit. I'm not going to read the rest, but this is this is something that can happen, guys. This is really, especially for anyone that's a parent amongst you, um, this is a really, really disturbing read, but very well written, very well crafted as Sean Hudson. <laughs> My husband's watching England play their first match in the World Cup downstairs and something's obviously happened he's not very happy about, so apologies for the exclamations you may hear throughout this video. Just grabbed another three biggies. Warhol's Prophecy. Exit. Oh my foot! Exit Wounds and Compulsion. Yeah, really really good books again. Um, Compulsion. This is um, about a gang of kids and crime and is this the one with the old people's home in? Yeah, an old people's home. Um, I imagine that Unless you're a Sean Hudson fan, you probably won't be watching this video. Um, so I don't really want to be specific about all the books because I'm sure that's... What is this? A post office receipt from 2012 for something. Um, I was obviously rereading that one. Just thought I'd show you these three in my collection while I'm at it. Um, these are all uncorrected proof copies. Um, this one, Lucy's Child. This is the actual cover of the book and this is one of my favourite books of his. Um, so that's the uncorrected proof of that. This one is Renegade. Renegades. That one's really, really good. And last of all, Captives. Uh, nice big weighty one. This one's quite interesting. It's, it's about something that I've always said I should do for years. Um, testing on really nasty criminals. Um, you know, like murderers and all that sort of thing. Um, as I said in the Hammer Horror tag, he has actually... Oh no, look at it! He has actually written... There's Twins of Evil, The Revenge of Frankenstein, you just see the little hammer in the corner there, and X, The Unknown. He's written under so many different names, and I'll show you this one first. Anyone in the UK, I don't know if you remember this, it was a competition run called End of Story. And there were, let's see what authors there were. Ian Rankin, Joanne Harris, Alexis Sale, Sue Townsend, Faye Weldon, Marion Keyes, Ed McBain, and of course, Sean Hudson. And each of them wrote half of a story, and you had to end the story. Hence why it's called End of Story. Um, I entered this competition. I obviously didn't get very far. <laughs> Um, my entry is actually up on Sean Hudson's website under um, like readers entries, there's a little picture there. Um, yeah, and the person that won it got to actually end the story. And it was a fantastic competition. Um, as all fans, we all read each other's endings online, which was really interesting to see. So um, yeah, I have to mention this very quickly. Sean 
um, over the years has been very proactive with his, fr his fans, very interactive, I should say. Um, and he sometimes took requests from people that were fans to be victims in his books to die. And I was lucky enough to be one of those people. So if you can just see at the start of chapter 18 there, I don't know if you can see that. My name there, Lisa McQuillan, that's my name before I got married. So I actually die in this book, which is just awesome. My favourite author who I have read for, I'm not going to tell you, you'll know what age I am anyway, too old. I have read Sean Hudson books for 27 years. Um, I've always been a big fan. I followed all his different doubles into slightly different genres. Um, but yeah, to actually be immortalised in a Sean Hudson book as a victim, incredible. Love it, love it, love it. He is also written as Tom Lambert. Lisa has even read war novels because they've been written by Sean Hudson. And they are riveting. So, Task Force Battalion by Tom Lambert. Sabres in the Snow by Stefan Rostov. These are like a Russian type thing. Um, Blood and Honour by Wolf Kruger. These, the Wolf Kruger ones I really enjoyed. As a matter of fact, these are all Wolf Kruger. Kessler's Raid, Men of Blood, Slaughterhouse. Convoy of Steel and Sledgehammer and this maybe all looks very boring. I would never in a month of Sundays have picked these off the shelf to read. Never. Can you hear that? <laughs> My son's misbehaving. My husband's not happy. I'm going to have to go soon and rescue him and take Isaac to bed. I would never have read these books. Um, they're not a subject matter that interests me. But once I heard they were written by Sean and I wanted as much Sean as I could get my hands on, I read them and they are fantastic. These three, written under the name Samuel P. Bishop, are westerns. I have read westerns. Again, awesome. Anyone that is a Sean Hudson fan and is given this book and is not told that this is by Sean Hudson will instantly know that this is by Sean Hudson by the style. He's got a very, very specific style. Um, and I love it. <clears throat> um, Terminator. Based on screenplay, obviously, but he wrote that as well. Um, there's just so many books here. So, so, so many books. There's even a little horror film quiz book. But, oh, and I wrote in these ones. Whoa! Um, Nick's Shadow. There's... There's 11, 12, there's 11, 11 of these books, The Midnight Library. These are like for um, teenagers, I suppose. Um, and I've got the whole collection. Spike T. Adams, Evil Ink. That's by Sean as well. And it's, it's like, I suppose, teenagers sort of thing. Um, parental advisory, teen content. I just, I just love the man. I love everything he writes. He used to write about really, really messed up stuff. And when you'd read the back of the cover, it'd be like, how, how can you, this one. Um, no, that's not going to actually say. This is about, this is obviously a fetus. And you can see that it's got claws. Peter's got claws. That was my really poor attempt at White Snake. Um, yeah, this is messed up. These women are giving birth to monsters, for want of a better word, kind of like a Children of the Corn sort of feel to it, but better. Um, yeah, there's one I was looking for about fetuses. It's really just. I'm gonna stop this. Okay, I find it. Get that for a cover. Look at that. Spawn. From the grave to the cradle came the spawn. This is just so messed up, but brilliant. I'm going to read this, but it's not very long. Rescued from their hidden grave beyond the hospital grounds, nurtured on human blood, they grow in darkness. And as they grow, their lethal telepathic powers expand, enslaving, crippling, killing all who look upon them. 
They are at the spawn. This is about fetuses. A lot of people may say this is in bad taste, but those people don't generally read horror. Um, again, was this not by Sean Hudson? I probably wouldn't have chosen this subject matter, but um, like every other book, I really enjoy it. You just read it and you're completely and utterly, what am I reading? What's what's that? And you go back and you read it and you reread it and you reread it. And um, just the way the man writes, I, I keep finding myself looking at it and reading a little bit. And um, I find about Sean, Sean tells stories, parallel stories happening at the same time that inevitably do come together in the end. And you're like wondering how on earth are they gonna weave these together? But he always leaves you on a cliffhanger at the end of every chapter and you're dying to know what happened with that person and then it starts the next chapter with another person and you're like, no, I want to know what happened with them. And then you read the, the other person and then when it gets to the end of that, there's something that you're desperate to know and then they change again. It's like, no. So by the end of every chapter, you're desperate to find out what happened with all of these storylines. Um, there's no boring writing here. It's just constant page turners. Um, I remember studying for my GCSEs when I should have been studying, but um, I used to sit and read Sean Hudson books just on the sofa all night while all the crap telly was on. My mum and grandmother, who I grew up with, um, liked to watch all the really crap soap operas like Coronation Street and Emmerdale and EastEnders. If you live in America, you probably won't have a clue what I'm talking about, but all the really crappy stuff that I just don't watch. I don't like soap operas so I just used to sit and read Sean Hudson books and emerge myself in that and yeah I've never fallen out of love with Sean as an author. I love him. He's just incredible. He um, has a website which um, he like writes little updates for the fans every once in a while as to what's happening, what's going on, what movies he's seen, what he thinks of them. He answers questions that the fans write in for him to answer. He's really proactive, really interactive with, with his fans and I will always buy everything he writes and read everything he writes. Um, some of them are better than others. Um, there's, there's very, very few that I would say aren't fantastic. There's, there's maybe a couple that wouldn't be favourites of mine, but I will never say that he has written a really poor book because he hasn't. Um, but yeah, definitely some are some are more favourite than others to me. Victims will always be my favourite because it's the first one I ever read and I love it. Um, the later ones that he's done where he's getting more into sort of the crime area, the sort of like things that could really happen. Um, I'm really, really enjoying that as I age, obviously. With Sean, it's, I suppose it's more horrific to you to imagine things that could actually really happen in real life. So yeah. I will stop the waffle now. I'm sure most of you haven't got this far and haven't watched this. If you have, thank you very much. If you're a Sean fan, if you've read any of his books, I'd be really interested to hear what you've read, what you thought. Um, and if you're not, give one of them a try. Just They, they sell for eBay some of the paperbacks now for, for so, so, so cheap. And pick a few of them up and, and see what you think. Because if you do like to read, he's such an easy author to read. So, like, page turning... Um, it's just not dull. Some authors can be quite hard work to get into. He's not. He's just instantly, you're, you're either going to love his books or if you don't, it's probably just a subject matter that you don't enjoy reading. So, but for me, I will always love him. He's my favourite author. I spend a lot of time on my channel talking about movies and horror movies and my loves in that, but I've never spoken about Sean Hudson, which is my bad because he, he's been a big part of my growing up with reading and books and horror. Um, he's shaped things I've enjoyed. Um, he's shaped, like I, I used to write a lot myself, short stories. Um, I don't so much nowadays as I don't really get time. But um, yeah, just nothing but love for the man. So thank you for watching if you have, if you've got to the end of this. Um, I will leave you there for today. It is Overnight from Lisa Loves. <laughs>